end of the first half drive where they get the ball with a minute 44 left, they can obviously get points. They take a minute to get 11 yards and use a timeout. They are then going yes. to go into the half with timeouts in their pocket. Yes. But they, Matt Ryan throws a pick, so it doesn't matter. And then at the end, near the end of the game, you are playing a team coached by a man in Sean Payton, CC, who once did a surprise onside kick in the Super Bowl. Do you, it, the situation was that people didn't know it. S Saints down three at the 22. They, there's a penalty on a third and in inches. So your option is to accept the holding penalty and have them in third and a little more than 10 or decline it and have them in fourth and inches. Dan Quinn declines it as if there was ever a chance Sean Payton was going to kick a field goal. Sean Payton, of course, then calls quarterback sneak. The Saints get it. It looks like the Saints are going to win until Drew Brees throws that terrible pass. So yes. I wasn't impressed by Atlanta. I, I give them credit. They got a critical win, a bad loss for New Orleans. But this was a game of two teams trying to give, give it to the other one. And Atlanta ended up taking it. Well, a Atlanta, two things happened in, in their favor. One, the injury to Kamar early. That changed the complex of the game. I mean, those first couple plays that they were running, it looked like New Orleans was going to march up and down the field all night. But he gets hurt there early, so they try to make an adjustment. They're not as explosive. Without this dual threat running back-wise, because you have to be honest with yourself, their wide receivers do not scare you. Like, the wide receivers aren't the type of group that they had when Drew Brees was throwing for 5,000 yards. Now, they are a quality group, but they don't have the explosive player in Brandon Cook. Their best receiver, Michael Thomas, is a possession receiver, a good receiver in his second year, had a tremendous rookie year. So, the only thing you say, well, if you're not impressed with Atlanta and Matty Ice, the only thing that was more disappointing was Drew Brees. Because this was a game where two quarterbacks played very bad. And then even after the mistakes and everything was set up for New Orleans to win, depending on Drew Brees, Drew Brees cannot throw that ball down the middle. Now the player makes a tremendous athletic play. Now you, you can't account for that. But you can't put the ball in arm's way where you know at least you have a tie where you're going into overtime. You can't take that type of chance. CeCe, that's the key point to me. They weren't down four or five or six. They didn't have to get the touchdown. The reason I said earlier you knew Sean Payton wasn't going to kick the field goal on fourth and inches, not because he wasn't ever going to kick mm -hmm. a field goal, but you weren't going to tie the game with a minute 40 left, give the ball back to Atlanta. Right. But it was totally on the board that that drive happily for New Orleans ends with a field goal kicked with like 20 seconds left. They take their chances in overtime. So that is a critical error by Drew Brees because they were only down three. And the defense, Dan Quinn and the defense they designed, was for New Orleans to be able to settle for the field goal. They were not going to play man-to-man. -man. They were not going to blitz them to give them a free, uh, a free throw because it's a lot easier to throw against man-to-man, -man, especially in the closed part of the end zone, the red zone. They dropped seven guys into coverage. You are not going to be able to find the hole down the middle when they drop seven guys in that short of a distance. So a critical mistake by Drew Brees. And it wasn't like he had to make that throw. Right. He could have checked the ball down, thrown the ball away, lived to play another day. So Matty, Matty Ice and Drew Brees were not at the top of their game. Last I know night. a win is a win, but this is not the win that you, you walk away from the game going, oh, I have confidence in the Falcons moving forward that they're going to do something with this and it's going to infuse more confidence in them and they're going to take this and run with it. I just don't have the confidence in them. But we talked about yesterday the fact that on a short day's rest, the coaches are going to keep the game plan simple. They want to get in and out of this game without many injuries go through because they don't have many days to go through a number mm -hmm. of different plays and whatnot how much of the fact that they were playing Thursday night factored into you didn't say big dynamic plays you didn't say big plays out of the quarterbacks maybe them keeping it a little safer and then at the end not playing very good games either by Matt Ryan or by Drew well I, I think it's it's very very difficult to play your best football when people are familiar with you your division opponents, they know the things that you like to do. You go cross-conference, AFC, NFC, or you go in other divisions. They're not as familiar with you. I know this as a player. I knew that when I left um, playing to be a broadcaster that, wow, I knew the NFC North. I knew the NFC, but, man, I really didn't know the AFC, and I had to be honest with myself. Players are not that familiar with the rest of the league. So it was going to be a, a tightly contested game, but once Kamara gets hurt, that's the key. It took the explosion 
out of them. Now, Atlanta, we know that they, they, they're scoring 11 points less than what they did last year. I mean, I think their average is like 20, 22 points a game. Right, last year they were near 33. Yeah, exactly so, right. you know, they, they were right where they wanted to be. They've been grinding out wins, but the thing about it, a win is a win. They got eight wins. Let me tell you who would like to be there. The Lions with six. The Packers with six wins. And the Cowboys with six wins. So, being right now with those, with those eight wins. I'll take it. Yes. The, I totally agree with Chris that as far as the Saints side of it, it was, it, when you saw instantly, Kamara was going to be featured. They were going to use Kamara like they did against Carolina. He was going to break tackles. He was going to be a terrible mismatch. Alvin Kamara, I mentioned Carolina, has been the guy Carolina thought they were getting with the eighth overall pick in Christian McCaffrey. Wow. Right? Yes. I mean, that's exactly what they <laughs> thought they were getting eighth overall. The Saints got him in the mm -hmm. third round. Once he goes out, I mean, people raised their eyebrows at me a bit, or at least mocked me on Twitter, maybe not raised their eyebrows at me, when I said Kamara's an MVP candidate if running backs were allowed to win MVP. You saw yesterday how valuable he is to this offense. He's averaging eight and a half yards per touch. No one's averaged over 7.2 in 25 years as a running back. Like, it's unbelievable how important he is. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, that was the biggest factor in the Saints offense bogging down the factor in the Falcons offense bogging down was terrible decisions by Matt Ryan they were moving the ball at the end of the first half terrible decision the beginning of the second half it was bad luck he hit Austin Hooper in the hands and he drops the ball yes. but another awful decision to Julio Jones in the end zone like I, I'm all for forcing it to Julio but force that sucker high let the best athlete on the field try to go make a play. Right, so, or him or no one else can catch it. Exactly right. So uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, in a season where we've seen some really bad decisions by players, yesterday we saw something that, that from Sean Payton that looked like an apparent choke sign <laughs> late in the game, and I'm wondering if you guys saw it and, and what you thought of it. So, so here's, here it is for people. This is unbelievable. If that's what it was. They got stopped on third and one is the context. Devontae Freeman, and I mean, he looks like he's saying, I mean, maybe it's a play call, but I mean, it looks like he's saying choke. Devontae Freeman thought he was saying choke and doing that. So, CC, you know Sean Payton. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I think that um, <laughs> I've had conversations with some coaches along the sidelines, so this is not something that, that is foreign. Um, very seldom do they catch the head coach. They typically catch, you know, one of the assistant coaches doing things like that. When you venture into another team's bench you will be shocked i mean everybody over there talks trash i mean the guy that's holding the water you, you know i run on green bay sideline the guy with hard in the water say get over there chump he's holding the water so those nfl sidelines some different things occur and typically we're not used to seeing a head coach called in this but sean Payne, oh not surprised sean is sean's no amateur like he he is fiery and i i think that his overall personality behind the scenes as a coach he is a hard nose football coach. All right, so CC has a few tells, is what we'd say in the poker world, and some of the verbiage he uses. And one of the words CC uses, that or phrases he uses, that is very complimentary is that guy ain't no chump. And I've heard you say about Sean Payton multiple times, he ain't no chump now. No. So can you can you just open the window a little bit into what makes Sean Payton maybe a little different than your average buttoned up? head coach he has the personality that you would think that would be with a defensive coordinator now he was mentored by Bill Bar Parcells and everything now Sean is a former quarterback so he coaches from a defensive mentality as far as the way he attacks the defense and I think his verbiage and the way he coaches he coaches like football coaches 40 50 years ago coached in your face, letting you know so there's no time, Jenna, that you don't understand exactly what, what he's saying. And if you don't like that, you can go somewhere else because he has his style and he's a very good communicator and the players really respect him. So a lot of times when you have that, when you have that respect, you can coach a guy harder. Now, Sean Payton is a hard football coach who is very, very good and probably, probably doesn't get enough credit because the defenses have been so bad. And the coordinators that he selected have really kind of hurt kind of his overall legacy. But he's one of the great coaches that we have in the game. So just so I know, he's no chump.
Ain't no chump. Ain't no chump. No, I, no I, right. what I love that about this show. When he went back and forth yeah. with Adrian Peterson. I'm yeah. learning every day. Yeah, he passed the look test. He, he passed the look test, he passed the smell test, and he ain't no chump. There you go, 